So we're over being afraid of color on our walls, but we still seem to be a little weak in the knees when it comes to art. I found a wall design expert who's here to the rescue. It's a very exciting day for us today. We were invited into the home of the wall design diva, Suzanne Gallagher. Oh, Hi, you. thank you for letting us come in. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to learn some really good tips from you today. And first of all, where do we even start when it comes to wall design and art? Well, that is an excellent question. It is a huge problem for most people. Mm -hmm. Normally, they start with photographs of people they know, uh -huh. like your family, Yes. <laughs> and oftentimes it can take up to 30 years before they actually purchase a piece of art because they don't know what to buy. You know, when you think about it, why do we design our rooms around a sofa? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something you're going to throw away in five years. Art is a great reflection of your personality. That's what makes it personal. That's mm -hmm. what makes it different from anyone else's home. So let's use this room as an example. You've chosen to put a beautiful piece uh, above the mantel. Now, if this is the only piece that you could put in this room, then would you be set for a while? Oh, absolutely. That's the focal point of the room. If you only have a couple chairs um, and a palm tree, mm -hmm. put a piece of art over your mantel. Over the mantel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about grouping pieces of art because okay. you can put a bunch of different pieces of art together, but did, they don't always necessarily have to be the same artist. Is that true? Oh, no. The and same as you frame? No. And as you collect art, too, you think, oh, what am I going to do with this one now? I don't have one place for it. Um, I encourage my clients to group things together on a blank wall to create interest and, and variety in your home. You know, we can move things around. If you have your house painted, take all the art down, or if you move, um, rearrange it, reframe some things and put it back and it'll it'll be looking brand new it'll you know create that newness that you're that you're desiring I think it's good to, to mix things. If you start by mixing finishes, for example, golds and silvers and pewters and a variety of finishes in a space, then you can put things together more easily. Another thing that people buy a lot of is mirrors, but they don't necessarily place them in the right spots in the home. Is that right? Exactly. Mirrors and sofas. You know, that's what they do because they know that they need something up on the wall. Mm -hmm. and, and But, you know, it's an easier choice to just choose a mirror because all you're choosing is the molding. But often Sometimes they don't hang them, so they reflect something beautiful. Okay, which a mistake would be over the mantle. Right? Well, yes, if the mantle is very high, then the, the mirror just reflects perhaps a blank wall across the room. Okay. And so then you put a floral arrangement in front of the mirror, and then you still can't figure out what's wrong. Well, Suzanne, your book is just packed full of really good tips and really good information, but if there was just one more tip you could leave our viewers with, what would that be? Well, I would say one of the greatest mistakes that people make is they don't know how much space to cover when they're decorating over a sofa or a piece of furniture okay and um, you should cover at least two-thirds or three-fifths of the space over that piece of furniture awesome good tips I think I'm ready to design oh, fantastic <laughs> I'll be over okay good <laughs> yeah, I can't do this myself <laughs> great Back to you guys thank you you can pick up Suzanne's book at any framing shop or amazon.com or on her website for a link check our website bettertv.com